Do you see this this season as a, as an arc from the cage and dealing with all the weird stuff with your sister to the original series? I mean, is that is that the end point? The kind of Spock in the first season of uh, TOS for you? Yeah, sort of. I think that that overshoots it by by probably a decade, right? Because uh, currently in in this in the season of Discovery, we're ten years before the original series, three years after the Cage, um, and so ultimately, yes, uh, Leonard Nimoy's Spock is the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but in terms of this season, I think there's, you know, this is just the beginning of his journey to becoming the Mr. Spock that we know from TOS. Well, do you do you expect to be back for the third season, either regular or guest? I can't say. You can't say. <laughs> okay. What, um, can you say anything about the the final four? Like, you know, what what's your uh, your point of view for Spock or in general of the final four? Uh, what I can say is that right, I've I've been a part of it. I've filmed it. I've been inside of it, and I can't wait to see it. Like, I think it's going to be so stupendous. Um, can you talk a little bit about, I mean, you and, and Sonique seem to have formed a kind of instant chemistry. Can you talk about how you guys got there? I mean, well, you know, did you prep for that or was it the first day on set it just kind of worked? It just kind of worked, to be honest. I think we just have uh, great respect for one another and uh, we both just jumped into the sibling rivalry thing and that kind of carries on and off set. And uh, I, I think we just lucked out with chemistry. She was just so willing, and, and I was, and I don't know. Now, you did a lot of research, you've said, about Leonard Nimoy. I mean, there's little things people picked up, like the way you say sensors and stuff. I mean, I've, exactly. Say, say it again. Sensors. Exactly. Okay. So, so these are conscious things of yours to kind of imbue Nimoyness? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, he's fr so he's from Boston, and you can hear that a little bit in the way he speaks as Spock. Um, and so I really wanted to to bring that in, and I don't know where sensors. I don't know where he got that from, but um, that's essential, you know, to him. So, yeah. So I wasn't going to overlook that. Now, uh, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, because obviously Anson is leaving, but a lot of fans are clamoring for this idea of a, you know, you and Rebecca and Anson having a, like a, a spinoff or a short track or something, uh, maybe a limited series. Is that something you'd be interested in on the Enterprise? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool. Has there been any discussion of that? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I gotta try. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Okay, so the last question of all your research into Leonard Nimoy, what, what did you, what's the biggest thing you picked up from reading about him, watching him, et cetera, that has influenced your interpretation? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it's been really gratifying, yeah. Probably how deeply empathetic he actually is. How, you know, deeply human he is. Um, and also it really was amazing that, so the first book he wrote, I'm Not Spock, was I think mostly not read and dismissed or like people interpreted it as him sort of disowning the character. And it was more like in defense of Nimoy because he becomes so much like Spock. Spock had become such a big part of who he was. And to understand the closeness he had with Spock as, as Leonard was really amazing. It just kind of speaks to the depths to which he went with, with Spock. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.